This is Craig with Garshalton Advisory, and today we're going to work through the Objective 3.3 practice tasks for the Microsoft Office 2016 Study Guide for Microsoft Excel Expert Exam. Let's get started. The first thing we need to do is open up the Expert 3.3 workbook. Now that we have that open, we need to, on the Historical Events Worksheet, and for each of the listed events, use the values in column B, the month in column C, and the days in column D. And so what we're going to do is we're going to change these numeric values into a serial date format that Excel is going to recognize, not as numbers, but as a date. So in order to do this, we need to use the date function. And so we'll enter equals DAT. It's highlighted in our autocomplete section. We'll hit tab to bring, integrate that into our formula. And for this formula, we need three uh, variables entered in. So first is the year. And so for the year, we want to use the value in column B. We'll arrow over until that's highlighted. Hit comma. Next, we need to add the month. And for that, we want to use column C. And lastly, the day, which we'll use column D. I will arrow over once to do that. I'll close this off with a parenthesis and hit enter. And so perfect. Now it's showing us that this is Tuesday, June 6th, 1944, when this occurred. So we want to do this for all four of these rows. So what we'll do is we'll just grab the fill button in the bottom right hand corner of that cell, drag it down. And now we have uh, the dates. Um, now we can actually test this out to see that it's actually in the serial format. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll just select one of these cells and up here in the number format section, we'll just hit general. And so sure enough, 32821 is the serial number that represents that date of uh, November 9th, 1989. Um, I can go back to uh, the long date function and it'll show me uh, that yes, it still recognizes this as a date. I'm just going to undo twice to get back to what we had originally. So that wraps up what was requested for this task. Next is we're going to go to the dates worksheet, which is our second item on the list here. Now that we are on our dates worksheet in our workbook, we're going to use our dates function again, but this time we're going to use it in a compound formula along with the year, month, and day formulas. So let's go into cell B2. We're going to start with our date function. And now it's the first variable we need to add is what the year is going to be. So we want to use the year from cell A2. So in order to do that, we have to use our year formula. So just type in YEA and there's our year function. So we'll tab that to integrate that. I'm going to left arrow once, say that I want to use the year that's in this value. Now we don't want just the year, we want to use the year plus one year as it's been requested to us. So we'll hit plus one. Next we need to enter the month for this function. So to do that, again we're going to use the value in A2, but we don't want all of it, we just want the month portion of it. So we'll use the month formula. We'll again arrow left to cell A2. And now we want six months in advance from that month. So we can just use six because that's how many months we want to have in advance. After adding a comma, the last thing the formula requests is what we're going to use as the day. In this case, we're going to use our day function. And again, we want to use the value that's in cell A2. Now, as a, uh, we don't want just the day, we want to use a day that is 15 days later than the date in A2. So we'll just add plus 15 here. I'll close this off with the parenthesis. We'll hit enter and we'll make sure that this works for us. All right, so now our new date is July 26, 2017. So that is one year, six months, and 15 days in the future. Now, one thing I'll point out with this formula, I do not like seeing constants inside the formula bar. 
So I will finish this off and then we will fix that so that we don't get in the habit of using that in our professional work. We'll drag the fill box, pull it down. And because we didn't, we used relative formulas rather than absolute, that formula is going to work for us all the way down. So that wraps up these two practice tasks. So you can drop out here if you like. However, let's try and get this fixed up so that it's better. Um, so let's add some constants here. We'll have years, months, and days just to name them. We want to be one year in advance, six months, and 15 days, just like it said in our practice task. Now what we're going to do is adjust this formula here. Instead of that plus one, we're going to set highlight cell D2. Okay, and I'm going to make that an absolute reference by using uh, F4. This plus six in the formula bar, I'm going to replace that, and I'm going to use cell E2. And we'll need to make that an absolute reference as well by F4. And lastly, the plus 15 in the formula, I'm going to replace with cell F2. We'll F4 that to make it absolute. All right, so you notice the result hasn't changed at all. Uh, and I'm going to fill this down. Uh, and again, you don't see any difference. We can check these formulas out, and sure enough, they have the absolute references still in place. But by having these variables outside of the formula, if I just said, you know what, I want the date that's three years in advance, all I need to do is change this one cell, and now all of these values have changed. What if we want it seven months in advance and 16 days? So now just by changing these three cells, all of these values get updated. So again, that's going a little bit beyond what the practice tasks have requested, but I want to make sure that you get in the habit of, of not just understanding the task as far as it's taught in the textbook, but also making sure you're using best practices so that when you're doing this in your regular work, uh, that you're not going to make any critical mistakes. Thanks for watching. I appreciate your time today. Uh, make sure to give this a thumbs up so I know that you appreciate it, and I look forward to working with you on the next set of practice tests. This is Craig with Carshalton Advisory. Thanks for watching.